In this video series, we're going to learn how to create an animated visualization of the selection sort algorithm. You may want to watch these videos in the intended order, so check out the description for the link to the playlist. In the last few videos, we learned about selection sort, how it works, and how to implement it in C Sharp. In this video, we're going to start the groundwork for visualizing the selection sort algorithm in Unity by writing code to randomly initialize cubes of different heights. In our new Unity project, the first thing we want to do is create a new empty game object in the scene. We'll call this cubes, as we want it to be the parent for multiple cubes. We're going to create a new script component on this game object and open it up in our editor, ready to write some code. We'll call this selection sort script, as we'll eventually be using it to sort our cubes. Now we want to create some public variables that can be set through the Unity editor. First, we'll define an integer named number of cubes, which is to be the number of cubes we will randomly generate. We can set this to a default of 10. We'll also define an integer named cube height max, which is to be the maximum height of a randomly generated cube. We'll also set this to a default of 10. Lastly, we'll define an array of game objects named cubes, so that we can easily reference our cubes later on. This will also be the array that we'll be sorting in later videos. Time to create our random initialization function. We'll call it initialize random. And the first thing we'll do is initialize our cubes array. We've initialized it to a size that can store all of our cubes using the number of cubes variable. Now we're going to enter a loop, which will loop around for every cube that we want. Inside the loop, we're going to generate a random number, which can be greater than or equal to one and less than the maximum allowed cube height plus one. We have to pass in cube height max plus one because the random number generator will generate numbers up to this number, but not including it. So if we don't add one, the highest number we'll get is nine if cube height max is 10. We'll create a new cube game object and store it in a game object variable named cube. And then we'll quickly call this function from start so we can test it by clicking run. As you can see, we've generated 10 cubes of equal height at the same position, so they appear as a single cube. Let's use the random numbers that we've generated to change the heights of our cube. To do so, we can modify the local scale of our cube's transform, which has a data type of vector free. We'll set x to 0.9, so that if we line them up next to each other, one unit apart, there'll be some gap between them. We can consider x to be the width of our camera angle. We'll then set y to the random number that we generated, and we can consider this to be the height. Finally, we'll set z to one, which we can then consider to be the depth of the cube. After clicking run, you can see that we've generated cubes of different height, but they're still at the same position. To line them up next to each other, we need to modify the position of our cubes transform. We'll set the value along the x-axis to be i, which will start at zero and then move up to nine in this case, lining up 10 cubes with equal distance. We'll then set the value along the y-axis to be the cube's height, or the random number, divided by two. This is so the cubes are aligned to the bottom and not centered vertically. Try setting y to zero to see what I mean. And then we'll set the value along the z-axis to zero. Clicking run, we can see the cubes are now lined up next to each other, but they're not quite within the camera view. The first thing we want to do to address this is to set the parent of each of our cubes to be the cubes game object that we created earlier. The cubes game object is also the one that's hosting the script, so we can just type this.transform to reference it. Clicking run again, we can see each cube game object appears to be within the cubes game object in our scene hierarchy. Therefore, by moving around the cubes game object, we also move around every cube within it. We'll do this within our script after our loop is completed. To do this, we'll have to change the position of our game object. We'll set the x-axis to negative number of cubes divided by two, the y-axis to negative cube height max divided by two, and we'll leave zero on the z-axis. This will near enough center our cubes by moving them down by half their total height 
and left by half of their total width. Switching to the scene, let's make sure the X and Y position of our camera is set to zero. And then let's switch to our game view to make sure our display is set to widescreen by selecting an aspect ratio of 16 by nine. When we hit run again, we can see they're all lined up exactly how we want them and nearly ready for sorting. All that's left now is populating our game object array with the cubes in order that they appear. Let's head back to our script and add one last line within our loop. We'll simply assign the cube at each position in our array in the order that they're generated within our initialization loop. By clicking run one last time, we can see the editor is now showing our populated game objects array. Now we're ready to move on to the sorting. That's all for this video on random initialization of game objects.